So I've got an upcoming uh, install for a client of mine where uh, I'm upgrading their network. Um, I'm installing this uh, USG Pro um, and we're also going to at the same time refresh their, their wireless. They already have a Unify wireless system and it's all a new cloud key. Um, they have an externally hosted Unify controller at the moment. Um, uh, they have a TP-Link, uh, this is just a TP-Link switch, but they have a TP-Link switch stack, over 100 ports, so they're a fair, fair size. Uh, they also have a Unify CCTV system and they also have some phones of course on the network and a phone server and various other bits and bobs that need to be taken into account. So I thought I'd quickly show how this is going to be configured. Um, it's a little bit more in depth than some other people's guides because this is going to be start to finish, it's pretty much a whole Unify system except we're also going to have some external to the Unify ecosystem um, devices configured into the mix. Uh, and this is very typical of a of an install, to be perfectly honest. You don't need to renew your switches um, if you have switches already that are perfectly fine. Um, generally, it's the routing and the Wi-Fi access points and other bits that need to be replaced every so often. So, USG Pro, uh, mainly because it's rack mount, um, but also because they have SFP-based internet connection. They have fiber to, to the premises. Um, so we can come in here if we wanted to, or copper. Um, you've got two WAN ports. We're only gonna use one uh, in this setup um, for these guys because they don't really need the, uh, the backup or anything like that. Not that you can really do that in Unify controller very easily. And then obviously you've got two LAN ports, but we're only going to use one again. Um, we're not going to use the second one. So I'm just on a laptop. I'm connected to the switch currently. Um, everything here is in its factory uh, default. And I am not plugged in to the LAN. So let's jump over to my. Uh, laptop and we'll have a look at what's going on. So to start with, uh, I've already done this, but I have um, set myself up with a static IP um, because we need to reconfigure the uh, TP-Link switch first so that when we launch everything else it will be in the correct range. So by default TP-Links go to uh, 192.168.0.1 um, uh, the password is admin, username admin, so we'll log in here, no, don't say the password, and we'll change the system IP address. So uh, the VLAN can stay as it is for now, we are actually going to VLAN this network. Uh, so I'm going to change it to 1.5, seems reasonable, uh, something that mask is fine, default gateway will be 192.168.1.1, and apply, yes, and then we'll save that config. Well, we won't say that config because we have to change our IP address again. So I'll just go into here and do that. So this should be the same on Windows or Mac. It makes no difference to uh, to your platform how you do things. Just makes the difference to how you actually physically do things. So we'll go back to this. We'll log back in again. Obviously, in a real environment, you'd change all your passwords, but there's no need for me to show that. Um, I'm going to save this config so that if it reboots we have the same config back on the switch which is uh, good. So now when I plug in the USG Pro it should by default come up at 192.168.1.1 um, which is fine, we're going to leave it there, that makes sense. Um, the existing router in this network that we're replacing is on the same IP address, same subnet. So I can now plug in our uh, LAN which means that we're now all connected. I'm also now going to change my IP address settings so that I'm no longer statically assigned. So I'm gonna change this to a uh, DHCP or dynamically assigned uh, address, which is very simple. Just do that and then okay, and then close. And then we'll wait for it to do its thing. And yes, this is an address that's given to us by Unify uh, Gateway or Router. So that's our link switch which we can still access uh, if I could type we can still access and then we can look for our USG Pro which will be on 1.1 and of course you get the standard certificate errors but there we go good so you can also see that I am uh, connected to the internet and uh, everything is looking good so in the clients environment the WAN settings won't be the HTTP, they'll be statically assigned because they have a static external, you know, worldwide IP address, um, which is useful. 
So uh, the next thing we're going to do is before we change anything on or in here, um, we are actually going to power up the we're actually going to power up the uh, cloud key. So I'm just going to chuck this in over here. And that should come on in a moment. So I am going to do a fresh install of their Unify controller. I'm not going to back up and move across um, because fundamentally their network is going to be completely different after uh, the upgrade. At the moment they have one subnet and everything is in that one subnet uh, and we're going to change that. Okay, so the Unify controller or the Unify cloud key, I should say, has uh, booted up. Sometimes it comes up on 192.168.1.20 uh, and obviously we have DHCP enabled um, in our USQ Pro so we can now um, just you know, go to the next address, which is the most likely for it to be, which is 192.168.1.7. So I'm just going to bang that in, and then we'll go to details, and of course, certificate error, so blah, blah, blah. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to set a static IP address on the Unify controller. So we'll do this, we'll do this. And the static IP address that this is going to get uh, I don't want to upgrade for the moment. We can do that in the future. I don't want any of these backups. So I am in the UK uh, and I am in London. Uh, I will enable auto backup. Uh, obviously there is our gateway. So yes, we are going to configure that device. Uh, I will skip this Wi-Fi. We'll do that in a moment. Error messages. And we're going to call the admin. Admin. Um, this doesn't really matter. Uh, the password does matter, so give yourself a good password. If you give yourself such a weak password, it just won't work. And then the device authentication. Um, I'm also going to set a password for this that I want for my devices to have, because there is a possibility that I will need to SSH into these devices at a later date. So um, these two passwords can't be the same as well, by the way. So I'm going to go next and then finish. Uh, I'm going to skip this for now. I don't want to be set up the cloud. So I'm not setting up the controller at all. I'm setting up Unify um, uh, controller. Uh, I'm not doing the cloud key, which is not what I quite wanted to do. Not a problem. It doesn't really matter which way around we do things. Um, so I can log in here. No. And you can see we have a unified controller. So I'm just going to open up another tab. And um, good. so we'll go here, confirm that, and then we'll go to the cloud key, which is the bottom one. So because I've already set up a uh, username and password here, uh, it will be the same as for unified controller. And you can see here's our uh, overview. So I'm just going to configure, well, configure the name. Unified cloud key is fine. We need to set this to... UK, which is up here, London, there we go. Reset button is on, just in case. And we're going to change this to a static IP address. And this is going to be 1.2. Uh, the gateway is 1.1, primary DNS is 1.1. And we're going to change this to uh, the Cloudflare DNS. So we'll apply those changes. And of course, now that we've changed the IP address, we also need to go and change it up here. The details, accept the security uh, error, which is not really an error. And then we can go back to our management, accept this again. And we're probably gonna have to log in again, which is absolutely fine. And I'm gonna save the password this time because this laptop will be wiped shortly don't want the updates and here we go so we have uh, one device on the WAN which is the, um, the USG Pro and it's connected and it's been adopted so on the actual device uh, you know if it's been adopted because it will go blue as you can see uh, so there it is it's doing its thing which is great so now we have three devices on our network uh, and they're all configured and all talking with each other. 
So, first things first, uh, we're going to adopt an access point and we're going to set up a wireless network. So, I am quickly going to plug in this access point, which is over here, I'll just plug it in anywhere um, for the time being. And we'll wait for that to boot up. And I'm going to quickly change my uh, settings in Unify Controller so that it updates a little bit more quickly. So I'm going to change it from 2 minutes to uh, 15 seconds. And then it will default back to 2 minutes every time I log in, which is really annoying. And there we go. So it has shown up. So the first thing I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to start naming these things. So in the config tab, you can have an alias or a name. So I'm just going to call this USG Pro. That's what it is. Uh, and I'm now going to adopt in this access point. So obviously they already have access points. So I'm going to have to forget them from their existing controller, which I have access to, um, and then adopt them into this new controller, um, which is not difficult at all. Um, just takes a little while. They have a mixture of um, UAPACs uh, and a couple of old UAPs, uh, which are slowly being removed from the network, but are in awkward places to get to. And while that's adopting, we're going to go into our settings, uh, not select everything, and we're going to set up some things. So their site is not going to be called default, we're going to call it M for now, and we're going to leave most of these settings as they actually are. Um, we don't really need to change anything. Probably quite difficult to see, but the um, it's actually gone. The uh, the access point's gone blue, which means it's been adopted now, uh, which is useful. So we'll go into the settings and we'll start changing things. So yeah, rename it to to M, just because uh, we'll apply that. Uh, and then you'll see up here in this corner, it's changed to M. It's the current site. We're only going to have one site on this uh, particular um, job, and then we're going to go to networks. So this WAN we're going to leave as it is. Uh, for now, in when it gets put into place, it will have a static IP address on its WAN, uh, and this is where you would set that up here. So you'd set that to static, but we don't need to do that. So go back to networks, and we're going to leave the corporate corporate LAN the same. So this is what they currently have. So all of their devices will work um, if I just drop this router in in place of their existing at the moment sort of, there's a few other things that need to be taken into account. Um, first one is the DHCP range. Um, so the subnet's correct, it's on the LAN port here, which is, the, you know, you normally can't change that anyway. The domain name, which is called for M. Uh, we don't have a unified switch, so there's no point in enabling this. It's not currently enabled as part of their switch stack anyway. Um, uh, they probably should have it enabled, but it doesn't really make any difference to them. DHCP server, yes, but we are going to change this to 50 to 200 or 199 uh, because they have a device on 200. Their phone server is on 201, I think. Um, so, and everything below 50 is currently set at static IP addresses. So we'll leave those as they are. There's many printers, switches, cameras, access points, all that kind of stuff. And we'll leave this to, uh, we'll leave that as it is for now. It seems a sensible time. DHCP gateway also, um, and the Unify controller we can set here as being 192.168.1.2. Uh, that won't really make much difference anyway. Can't enable DHCP guarding because um, we're not using Unify switches. Advanced DHCP settings, you can enable various things. Um, here again not really needing any of these in their network they don't have a win server uh, they're mainly a Mac out, outfit IP6 not using on their network so we'll save that as it is and that's their existing network now we're also going to create uh, two new networks for them so we're going to create a guest Wi-Fi network and we're also going to create a separate corporate Wi-Fi network so we're going to call this one Wi-Fi um, this one is going to have a VLAN we are going to set this VLAN to 2, 
um, the IP address slash subnet will be 168.192.168.1 no, dot one slash 24 so this will be their corporate Wi-Fi and it will, will also be used in the same LAN port we're going to do the VLANing in the switch stack um, the HTTP server yes we're going to do that 192.16 actually we'll just do update DHQ range job done um, that seems sensible we'll leave that as it is we'll leave that as it is we'll leave that as it is again we don't need any of these advanced settings and we don't need the uh, IPv6 so we'll leave those as they are and save that we're also going to add another VLAN which will be uh, VLAN 4 we're not going to use 3 because um, it will clash with some other stuff here uh, where I'm setting this up but it makes no difference to the end result um, so we're going to call it guest guest Wi-Fi uh, this is going to be a guest network uh, it's also going to be on the LAN and we're going to put this on VLAN 4 and the IP address 168. Uh, 192.168.4.1 slash 24. We'll update the DHCP range uh, and leave all the other settings as they are for now. So let's make this actually consistent and name things correctly. So Wi Fi should have a capital FI. Save that. Right. So we have four networks uh, currently set up. Um, the 1, 2 and 4 networks as I'll call them and we have our WAN network as well so uh, as is this will, can be dropped in um, without any kind of issues um, in their network so next thing we should probably set up is our routing firewall um, so there are no static routes they don't need any of those the firewall yes they do need some firewall rules um, so when in we need to know we're going to add some port forwards rather than firewall rules um, because they have specific uh, stuff that they need to do so um, first things first is the cloud controller or the cloud key unify controller um, so from anywhere yes the ports we want to add you can add like range or just numbers uh, 22 and then I also want 8443 uh, I'll leave it like that for now forward IP 192.168.1.2 and I don't think we need that so both UDP and TCP for now and yes we'll enable login and save that well, I want the same ports. So we'll save those. Good. Uh, I don't need the GOIP filtering, um, really. We'll just leave it like that. Now, they also have a number of other rules, um, which are like existing rules, which I'll grab from their, um, their existing uh, router. So, of course, the phone server, that's the other one they have. And I'm going to add 5060 um, forward IP address 192 uh, 168.1.201 is their phone server, and we'll leave it as 5060. 5060 uh, enable login, of course. Now I will have to come back and add these and remove 5060 because that is not a port you wish to uh, leave open unless you really have to, and you should restrict this down a lot, lot further. Um, because otherwise if you've ever stood up a SIP server on that port you'll know um, hell basically breaks loose on your IP so um, we don't need any of this intrusion stuff we'll leave this on um, it's not really a problem so we're going to set up the guest Wi-Fi uh, the guest control yes they will have a portal um, they won't need any passwords or anything like that we're going to set the expiration to two hours which is a or, or not two hours but for now we'll set it down to two hours choose one two hours reasonable time for this organization um, they will end up going to a uh, URL but that will be the company's website um, we don't need secure portal but I'm going to enable it anyway. 
da, 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 da. We'll leave this as it is. Um, we'll leave all of this as it is for now. They are going to have a custom uh, landing page um, set up for them, but that's completely kind of irrelevant for this video. So I'll leave it as it is. But you would uh, change in here what it looks like. They're going to have custom logos and probably a custom background image. Um, they don't need any pre auth access control um, and they don't need any post authorization uh, restrictions. Um, but obviously, this is telling the uh, telling the router that they are not allowed to access other local non routing um, uh, subnets. So basically, they won't be able to get into any of the other um, networks that we set up previously. So we'll save that for now. User groups, right? So we're going to have a um, rate restriction on the. Um, guest Wi-Fi users, so we'll call this uh, Wi-Fi guest, uh, and we are going to limit both their upload and their download. So we're going to limit their upload to, um, or sorry, we're going to limit their download to five, and their upload to one. This organisation actually do have quite a beefy internet connection, hence the USG Pro, and we don't want the guests being able to cane their networks so that the business can't operate. That would be a bad idea. So we're going to enable that for our Wi-Fi guests. The default LAN. So if you want to wire into their standard corporate network, you can have um, you can have unlimited. It's not a problem. Um, controller is obviously set up in here. If you didn't already set it up from other places, so I don't really need to rename the controller. Um, the controller host name IP address doesn't appear to anyone other than me. Not a problem. Don't need the mail server. I'm not interested in getting notifications or anything like that from this server. All of this, uh, I'm going to leave as it is. I will set up cloud access, but I'm not going to do it right now. Um, and these other things, I don't need too much. The one thing I do want is the backup. I want the backup retention for uh, as long as possible, as long as there is um, space to be storing that. Uh, and obviously you've got the cloud key. I'm not going to check for updates at the moment. Uh, the controller probably does need an update, but again, it's not really relevant to what I need it to do. Now, uh, the last thing I do care about is the auto backups. So they're previous backups from other stuff. Enable auto backup, yes, every no. I want them every day. Uh, and I want them to do it at 2 a.m. every day. Uh, maximum number of files, let's change that to 30. And date retention, th oh, no, 30, not 7.30. And date retention, 30 days, that's pretty sensible. I'll probably get a phone call well before 30 days if there's a problem. So, great. Lastly, we need to set up our wireless networks. So I'm going to create a new wireless network. I'm going to call it Corp Wi-Fi. Enable this wireless network. This will have a uh, password. They're just a standard personal password, so I'm just going to set this to uh, password for now. Um, they don't need guest policies. However, they will be dropped into a VLAN. So we're segregating as part of this upgrade. We're going to segregate LAN wired traffic from LAN Wi Fi traffic or wireless traffic. Uh, so we're going to set them onto VLAN 2. Uh, I want the SSID to be broadcast uh, because otherwise no one will connect. And user group default, we're not going to put them into a restricted um, user group. We're going to leave pretty much everything else the way that it is. We're not using radius on this wireless network. And then we're also going to create a um, another wireless network. So this that was the first wireless network which dropped them into VLAN 2. The next one is the guest Wi-Fi which we're going to drop into VLAN 4. Get new uh, SSID. So what have I called? Let's catch that for a minute. Yeah, Corp Wi-Fi. Uh, obviously, I'm going to rename these to whatever the uh, client wants. So I'm going to call this one Guest Wi-Fi. Enable this. Yes, it's going to be open. Apply guest policies. Yes, I want those advanced options. 
VLAN. Yes, we need to enable the VLAN. So I want them in four. User group. Here we're going to set them to be uh, Wi-Fi guests. Uh, so that'll be five slash one up or down and up. Uh, we're going to leave everything else the same. Not doing any radius or anything funky. Which is great. So in my wireless networks, I will not actually see any because we need to go to devices. And then in here, we need to configure our uh, access point. So I'm going to give it a name. Uh, I'm going to call it AV. Uh, use the site settings. Yes. Um, oh, well, as it's using the site settings, it will already have pulled down the wireless LAN. So wireless LAN group default, because I don't really see any point in renaming it. Uh, they're only going to have one um, group for wireless LAN. They're not massive organization they only have well they have less than 10 access points corporate wi-fi guest wi-fi on both uh, 2 and 5g networks uh, so that is now provisioned uh, which means that i should now be able to see those wireless networks uh, which if i go here so yeah we can see corporate wi-fi and we can see guest wi-fi so um at the moment, that's our Unify access point configured. That's our USG Pro configured. Um, the APs I'm going to leave on DHCP. There's no need for me to set them as static IPs uh, right now. Again, once I'm in situ, I will set them as static IPs uh, with their existing static IPs that they already have, which I'll have to redo because I'm moving them from controller to controller. Uh, but again, that's not really a problem. But at the moment, if we go back to our dashboard, Everything is good and dandy, except the switch is not configured or VLAN aware. So if we go back to our switch over here, at the moment I have um, on port 8, which is over this side, I have what I want to be a trunk, um, a trunk port. Um, and then here is me plugged in on my laptop. Here is our controller, we use my cloud key. And over here is my access point. So the way that I'm going to configure their network is I'm going to have a number of ports that are trunk ports uh, and then a number of ports are basically on their corporate um, LAN. So there's only really going to be two two port configurations for their switch stack. Um, and obviously all of the inter-switch connections will be trunk ports. Uh, but we need to make everything VLAN aware because otherwise it basically there will be issues with contamination between packets and stuff um, so the first thing is I'm gonna uh, redo this um, this switch so I'm gonna put all my trunk ports over on one side and then all of my sort of corporate VLAN ports over the other side so the first thing is I'm gonna move me I'm gonna move the controller and the access point so I'll put these over here and then obviously everything's gonna be very annoyed that I've moved everything but that is not a massive deal so you can see it's probably uh, it's what it is it's redoing stuff in here let's refresh the page so that's much better so I'm gonna set up the ports on the switch one to four being on the uh, uh, VLAN one and then six or five six seven eight I'm not gonna use the SFPs on this at the moment uh, as being my trunk ports so I'm gonna go to VLAN and then I need to create my VLANs. Uh, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change the name of our default VLAN from default to corp. Uh, and we're going to oh, sorry. Uh, and we're going to leave uh, untagged 1 to 10, which means any traffic that comes in on any of those ports will automatically go to the corporate uh, VLAN. You may want to do something different uh, for obvious reasons, I would hope. So 2 was our Wi-Fi uh, VLAN. So we'll create that. And then 4 was our... Four was our guest VLAN or guest Wi-Fi, um, so we'll make the uh, ports aware of this. And then basically for uh, port uh, or sorry for VLAN two, we're going to make sure that um, our ports five through eight can accept uh, tagged traffic, which will come in from access points and go to the router as tagged traffic. Um, so we'll, we'll enable that so they can all pass tagged uh, traffic. Um, which is great. So we should uh, should now have everything working, and uh, please VLAN. No, that's fine. Saved. 
Right, so we'll save that. Um, okay. And now everything should be working uh, basically the way that we want it, and we should be able to access everything uh, across our network. Now that everything is talking to each other, and we've got our access point uh, connected again, the next thing to do is to make sure that our, uh, our other networks are working. So obviously we have two wireless networks, the guest Wi-Fi and the corporate Wi-Fi. Um, that we need to check and we know if we are able to connect to these because they will give us different IPs in different ranges so I'm going to connect first of all to the uh, corporate Wi-Fi I think I'll set the password to password so we'll use that yes we'll do this because why not and then if we go here we should be able to see our corporate Wi-Fi and if we go to properties well, not properties rather we want to go status so let's go status. We should see that we're connected, very good speed, and we indeed have the an IP address in the correct range. So that would look like we are connected correctly. So the, third, the thing I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to disconnect from my wired network. So you can see I'm, uh, I'm unplugged from the wired network. And I'm going to go back here and make sure I can access both the uh, gateway, which it looks like I can also make sure I can still access the unified controller which I can which is great so now what we're going to do is we're going to do a quick speed test so speed test and we'll just see what we are getting so this is corporate Wi-Fi, so it's not rate limited by Unify in any way. So this is basically what I have at home, uh, which is you know not too bad. Very good ping. Great. So now what we're going to do is we're going to drop onto the other wireless network, the guest Wi-Fi, uh, and we're going to connect to this. So of course this is a guest portal Wi-Fi and it is rate limited. So let's make sure we get sent to the right page. Yes, yes. I can change this so that we don't have to deal with this anymore. And we're going to connect. So we've got the right IP address now. Uh, 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 let's just make sure we are still online. Let's go to a reliable source, BBC. So we're online, great. And we'll go and do a speed test again. So speed test. And we'll start this. So this should come back as being rate limited at 5 and 1 meg. So yeah, it's near enough uh, what we want. So it's six meg and then 0 0.6 meg. Uh, I don't know how accurate this one is. So we'll leave that as it is for now. I'm quite happy with that. Um, but we should not be able to access our cloud key. And we should not be able to access our router. waiting for a response we should also not be able to access the switch so 1.5 I know I could do this with the ping I'm just using uh, well edge or in explore whatever this one is um, so that's great so this is pretty much how it's going to go out to the uh, to the client I'm going to turn my Wi-Fi off now uh, disconnect and go back to the wide this is pretty much how it's going to be configured for the for the end client. The only thing is, obviously, names will be changed, passwords will be changed, and um, I will have to add a load more port rules in. Um, I'll also set up the VPN separately for them. I'll do that probably on site because I need their pre-shared keys from their existing VPN anyway. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much how I'd set up a Unify system for a small company that are um, doing basically an upgrade. Um, so yeah, I hope you in the, enjoyed, I guess, this little video. I hope it's been informative, um, showing you how there's more, you know, you can do more than just um, live within a Unify ecosystem. Obviously, it's the USG Pro, the, the cloud key with the controller, and we've got a, you know, uh, an AC access point here, but 
they've got AC access points as well as the UAP access points. Um, and we're using non unify equipment as well in this configuration uh, because that's what the client has and it's perfectly suitable for what they need. So, um, yeah, I guess like or dislike this video, depending on whether you found it helpful or not helpful. Um, let me know if you have any questions. I, I run a Unify system at home uh, as well. So uh, I do a lot of testing at home. If you want me to test something for you, let me know. Um, but yeah, you know, subscribe if this has been useful or not. Thanks.